Don't waste your money on these 10 luxury brands. According to Yahoo Finance, let's see what they're talking about. So there are some on the list that I agree with and others I simply don't. And we're gonna talk about why. If that's something you're interested in, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of my future videos like these and hit the like button while you're here. And let's jump right into this list and see what they talking about. All right, so article link down below as well. First on the list, I'm shook. I'm shooketh. Louis Vuitton. Like we, we starting off like this. Okay, so basically they are the most valuable luxury brand in the world. One of the most profitable, obviously a part of LVMH. We already know this. They have profit margins above 30% and they offer a wide selection of marked up goods. Okay, they say basically that the bag is overpriced. I mean, come on, we know all of these designer bags are overpriced. You're paying for the name. You're not paying for the quality. If you're paying for the quality, they'd be much cheaper. I would say with some of the bags, I would agree with, like especially canvas. canvas Canvas, I feel like it's only worth so much. And it's not like they're changing anything to make it more valuable. Leather even shouldn't even been going up too much. I just feel like especially the smaller bags are overpriced. I agree with it. But as far as to go, don't waste your money on these luxury brands, I feel like that's a huge category. I feel like some of the bags from Louis Vuitton are still worth it, but others aren't. Like for example, the Alma BB. The Alma, I feel like it's a great price. It's a bit pricey compared to what it used to be, but it's still at a decent price point. When you're talking about the most bullshit bags like that even like the steamer pm from louis vuitton i feel like it's overpriced so as a whole i would say i disagree but i can understand where they're coming from with this article where he's coming from he david who wrote the article i can understand where he's coming from as far as saying it's a waste of money first of all you're a man i'm not sure if you're into luxury items if you're into designer bags some men are i'm not sure if you're one of these people but starting off the article with louis vuitton something tells me you aren't i don't know I'm biased as hell, okay. Next, Bang and Olufsen. Okay, so I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't know what they talk about. Let's see. Oh, okay. So they're basically a Bose competitor. They are known with Bose for being, or for having streamlined audio products that look sleek. It's a luxury. Okay, so I'm gonna tell you. I take my audio very seriously. I take my music very seriously. I love music, okay. I love the jamming out in the car. I love a quality speaker. I love a quality headphone as well. Actually, the headphones I own are from Bose and I get it. Okay. Okay, I get it. I'm not familiar with Bang & Olufsen though. It says there are plenty of affordable alternatives that provide wonderful sound. I could kind of agree with that, even though I love Bose, because I have known a couple people who have owned the Beats headphones and they have stopped working. They have broken, they have torn, and those are very expensive. My Bose headphones are very expensive too. I feel like, I think they're like, I don't even know. That is bad, I just don't remember. I think two or 300 bucks, but I will pay it over again if I had to. I probably wouldn't if they break that easily. But I'm saying that to say people take, you know, they like what they like. And some people would invest more in quality audio, and things like that, invest more in bags, you know, even. I have to say though, I'm not gonna be biased in this video. I have to say, I used to work at AT&T in the retail store and we sold a lot of these. We sold a lot of different headphones, a lot of different sound things and there were some cheaper alternatives that give you the exact same thing as the expensive version so i have to agree with him on this he's kind of come back from the louis vuitton comments but i can agree definitely with this i feel like for audio you can you know buy less i'm just a huge music and tech head you know i love my all apple products okay i love my bose speakers that's just how i am okay that's just how i am next rolex so we know that the Rolex watches are thousands of dollars. Consider the true value you're getting. They're well-crafted. You're paying a premium for your name and status symbol. There are fewer watch wearers. I can agree with that. I used to wear watches a lot and then I got tired of buying batteries for my watches. So I was like, I'm not wearing a watch anymore. <laughs> Cause it's literally just for the look. And I don't really like how the watches look with the jewelry that I'm wearing anymore. So I stopped wearing them. So Rolex, absolutely, you're paying for the name. That doesn't change the fact that Rolex watches look really nice. I love the watches from Rolex. I just, I just, the, the price, the price, oh, the price. Yeah. And I can agree with him on this as well, because just like with jewelry, watch, watches aren't jewelry, they're gold. Like for Van Cleef, for Cartier, you're paying a surcharge for the name. If you can get the same functionality with a cheaper alternative and still get real gold if you wish. So I kind of agree with that. That and the annoying principle that they're hard to get, harder to get than other watches is just... I don't have time. Next, Rolls Royce. Rolls Royce. I have so much to say. This is the luxury vehicle. 
obviously. So vehicles hold substantial value, some of them. Most of them lose a portion of their value when you drive them off the lot. So I had a luxury vehicle. I used to drive a Porsche Macan, as you are familiar with, and I custom ordered it from Germany, from their manufacturer. And I believe I financed it at 85 grand, 80 something thousand, I forgot. And I bought this in March of 2020. I believe I sold it after two years. When did I buy my Bronco? No, three years. So I took great care of my car and it didn't have any nicks. I upgraded some features in there. I mean, you know, I bought a lot of upgrades that came with it and it didn't have many miles on it. Y'all, when I traded this truck in, it, I believe it had a resale value of 43 grand. That's more than half. And I didn't even have 50,000 miles on it. I don't even have 40,000. I don't, I don't think I have 30,000. I had 20 something thousand miles on the car, okay? I'm saying that to say, you spend all this money on these vehicles. When you drive them off the lot, they're depreciating or deteriorating in, deteriorating in value. Now that doesn't, it doesn't mean anything to you, probably, if you plan on keeping your vehicle for a long time. I'm the type of person, I like new tech. I like new, I like new, 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 new. And perhaps I should lease instead of buy, but I, something about leasing and them trying to tell me what to do with my car, that bothers me. So that's why I don't lease. I like to customize my stuff. I don't want to be told how many miles to drive. I don't drive that many. I drive a little more now because I do Instacart more, but I don't want to be told how many miles to drive. That's that's cutting into my territory. I'm paying the bill, okay? So that's why I don't do leases. But it's just something about investing in a car now where I'm kind of like, ugh. And even now, I have a Bronco. I upgraded, I made a lot of changes to my Bronco. I, I is wrapped, okay? Which is a ridiculously waste. It's a ridiculous waste of money, in my opinion, since I've gotten it. I believe the wrap was 4,500. And I already see little nicks, little nicks that are annoying me. And I'm like, do I have to get this whole thing rewrapped again just to fix this? It's just foolish to me to invest so much money into a car, especially, you know, going through what I've been through in buying things and selling them and seeing where my money is going. And I don't see it. I mean, it's just appearance literally but i'm not saying i'm not buying another luxury car because i probably am <laughs> This is just me. The next, Air Mattis. This is gonna piss a lot of people off. Okay, so it says they're not always worth the hefty price tag. I can't comment on that because I've never owned one. I can't imagine how it could possibly be worth 10 grand plus, but I digress. So there's a two year wait. The craftsmanship and exclusivity are appealing, but you can invest your money elsewhere. You could replicate it for a fraction of the cost, providing similar style and functionality without a high price tag. I guess I could probably agree with that, but it says you can invest your money elsewhere. So I've never owned one. One, but I know of how it works kind of so if you buy an Hermes bag from the store you're not paying a surcharge I mean you are for the name but that aside you're buying it at the retail cost however if you buy it secondhand you're paying double or sometimes triple of what it is offered for in the store so if you buy a bag from the store and you resell it you are making way more than your you know what you spent and what you put into it so for that reason alone i can't really say that you're better off investing your money elsewhere because that's like a quick turnover and profit but at the same time how much work is it to get a bag what is it taking for you to get the bag or do you have to buy tons of stuff to get it so you have to think about that too so i don't know i don't own one i don't hate the people that do it's a nice beautiful bag whether you get the birkin or the kelly the evelyn questionable i don't like it <laughs> but yeah, I think it's I think it's a good investment personally, but I don't know. By the way, if you're new to the channel, I'm Candace of Glamless Mama, your go-to source for colorful, sporty, chic, fashion inspo, and all things luxury such as this. If that's what you're interested in, be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss out. I post every Monday, Thursday, sometimes Saturday, sometimes I switch to days, but you don't want to miss out. Subscribe. Okay, Tiffany and Co. I definitely agree. So, it seems alluring. You're paying premium for the name. Okay, same tune. Okay, you're paying more for stones that are comparable to Costco. Oh, dang. Okay. So I can agree with this. My husband actually bought me a push gift from Tiffany. It was a necklace and it had a little tiny stone in it. Blue. And it's my daughter's birthstone, basically. Sapphire. I love my daughter so much. Anyway, beautiful gift. I plan on re-gifting it to her when she's old enough. I might actually put it on her now. No, I could wait till she gets older. So I don't want her to do the wrong things with it, you know? But I was astonished. He didn't tell me how much it spent he spent but i was curious i'm like how much is this necklace how much was it two grand for this little tiny stone on a necklace i'm like hey, you could have i didn't tell him i'm like you could have gone to sales you could have gone to k or somewhere like that and got this exact same necklace at literally a fraction of the cost so i just couldn't believe it uh-uh not worth it at all no no next gucci so we we coming for them again we're coming for 
Well, we're coming for a bread. <laughs> like Louis Vuitton. Okay. Blowing thousands or hundreds on a Gucci item won't offer much lasting value to typical American. As starting a high yield savings account will. I can agree with that. Gross margins are above 60% of total revenue. Okay, so it's obvious. A lot of these brands mark the prices up. Okay, we know this. And also, in my experience, Gucci's resale value isn't the best. It isn't. Okay, so you're really gonna have to get your cost per wear before trying to sell it to even make it somewhat worth it. But but nonetheless, we still wear it, we still buy it, whatever. I feel like you can have your Gucci and have your high yield savings account, okay? Next, Prada. Notoriously overpriced, reputation has taken a beating over the last few years. The brand has seen demand for the handbags plummet since the 1990s. So I'll admit, I'm not the hugest Prada bag fan. Actually, I don't think I have any Prada bags no more. I'm not getting rid of them because I wasn't wearing them much. But I do have a couple on my wish list that I do plan to buy. Anytime I buy something new, I saw something. This is what it is. I'm not about to own 100 bags. I'm just not. Although it kind of looks like I'm getting close. <laughs> I'm not. Anyway, I feel like Miu Miu is saving them because I feel like, because Prada, I think, owns Miu Miu or their, their sister brand, something, okay? They're saving them. But I, I find that this man is biased. I don't think they're doing so bad because they're still popular they still have some it bags out there people are still buying them they're still wearing them even they're ready to wear it people are still buying and wearing them so the prices are a bit outrageous okay because i got a little small pair of triangle earrings that i need to wear more often for like 400 dollars, which is overpriced when they're not real Okay, they're pleated. So let's just move on. Chanel, okay. We definitely agree here, sir. Okay, so they're famous for bags, fragrances, fashion, fine jewelry made from the highest grade material. The iconic classic flat bags are retailing for more than 10,000. There's no rhyme or reason for that, all right? You can't justify that to me. Don't even try. We'll be here all day long. So with the eyewear and sunglasses, you're paying more for the brand name, obviously. The frames are unique in design, but they're supposed to be functional. They're sunglasses. I agree with him with there. Yeah, we know it's not worth it yeah the quality has deteriorated and i feel like you know it should be more priced at what they used to be rather than a ten thousand dollars plus it's ridiculous how much they're going for these days the bags the other stuff even even the card holders ridiculously priced okay so here's a brand i don't think should be on this list at all coach coach has really stepped their game up since i used to buy them in middle and high school okay so popularity has dropped because they are too accessible to be exclusive they're attempting to address the issue by becoming more exclusive they're reducing the number of online flash sales and adding pricier bags to its already expensive lineup sir you cannot in the same article put coach and Chanel expensive. They're not even in the same pay range. Coach is typically hundreds. Chanel is thousands. So this tells me this man don't know he don't know what he's talking about. Anyway, I've already seen some coach bags be extremely expensive. And personally, I wouldn't spend a certain price point for coach because I know the price that they used to be. And I'm not saying it is not worth it. I feel like coach leather is superior to a lot of the high-end design brands out there and the price point is pretty good for what it is. So they're trying to be more exclusive. I don't know if they're talking about Hermes exclusive, but they, they, if they're trying to do that, look, you coach, okay? Stay in your lane, stay in your lane, be accessible. I mean, it annoys me too when too many people have the same bag as me. I don't like that, I don't like it. So I get that part, but to make it more exclusive, to make it more expensive, to you know make the price ridiculously expensive when you coach. And I'm not saying that to be, you know, to talk bad about coach, because coach is great, okay? But it's cringe. I don't like it. Let me know what y'all think about this list. Should some of the brands be taken away and should some be added? Let me know down below what y'all think. Curious to know y'all's thoughts. And in case you missed the last video, check it here. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Talk over there.